equilibrium demonstration. This time it's due to the equilibrium of um, an acid dissociating and looking at how this um, dissociation is affected by the temperature. So it's involving the phosphoric acid and it's also using the, um, the indicator methyl violet which changes colour from um, a yellow, well it's got two colour changes really, um, it got, has a yellow colour or and then it has a blue colour as well. So the in between there, when they're both hanging around, it's more like a more like a greeny colour as well. So what we're going to do is look at um, changing the temperature, and this is going to be able to use equilibrium to determine whether a, a reaction or a um, this type of dissociation, whether it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. So um, let's get struck straight into it. And first of all, I'm going to show you the video and. I'm going to try and um, allow you to determine whether you think it's an endothermic or exothermic and then I'm going to um, go through and explain what's happening here. So, first of all, let's go look at the video. Here it is here. Um, obviously, I've got my two solutions and I've just put some... This is phosphoric acid and it's got the methyl violet indicator into it. I've got a beaker there of ice water and I've got another beaker there of hot water. I put them in there just to try and change the temperature a little bit. And I'm just going to let that play and let you see what happens to the um, temperature, ch um, to the colour as the temperature changes. It doesn't go for too long here, obviously, I've, I've sped it up a fair bit for you as well. So, obviously, you can see it sort of changing colour. You can see the, um, the one on the right, left hand side there going a bit a lighter green, um, and the one on the right there turning a bit of a a bluey colour there as well, so um, I'll just <clears throat> let it change colour so you can think about what's happening to um, this, the indicator, and what's happening to this way, which way the um, reaction is going, and from that we can determine whether it's going to be, whether this dissociation of the phosphoric acid is going to be endothermic or exothermic. So um, now let it there, and now I start to speed the video up so you can see what happens. And once again, changing color. You can see it pretty clearly there that the one on the right hand side has gone a more of a blue color and the one on the left hand side there in the cold has gone a bit of a lighter green color, um, obviously due to the presence of this ion here a bit more. And take them out and there you have it. And I'll pause that there just so we can discuss what happens. So if you want to pause this video here and we can talk about and you can think about if this reaction is exothermic or whether this reaction is endothermic and I'm going to go through the um, reasons behind what is the, actually the case. So pause it now and let's have a look at it. Okay, so what is happening here? So first of all, I'm going to look at this hot, the hot water. Now this has become more of a blue color, so obviously we have a Ford reaction of our indicator. Okay, why does this Ford reaction happen? Now, this means that there must be a decrease in the amount of um, H3O+. Because we haven't changed the amount of indicator there, all we've done is something's happened to this and we had a forward reaction happen. So that means we've had a decrease in this and so the equilibrium has been re-established by pushing this reaction forward. That means that this reaction here must have had a back reaction occur because this decreased pushing this forward. So that means this back reaction occurred. Now this back reaction happened in an hot water. So that means, according to Le Chatelier, if you put a solution in hot water, it will try and counteract that. So that means the back reaction here must be endothermic, and that's what I've got here. Now I'll read it through and explain it. In the hot water, the color change, we can tell that there's been an increase in this indicator negative, which is a blue color. This is caused by the decrease in hydronium because Lachat says we want to 
re-establish equilibrium by re-increasing this. So therefore we have a forward reaction here happening. The decrease um, happened by this reaction being pushed backwards. So that means that the back reaction is endothermic because it was in a hot solution. So then Lachat says if it's in a hot solution, it will favour the endothermic reaction. And therefore the back reaction happened, so therefore the back reaction is endothermic. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, we'll look at the next one, and it's the opposite, obviously. So, now this one here, what happened here? Now it became a bit more of a yellowy colour, a bit more of a yellowy green when it was actually in solution. If I move back, you can kind of see it a bit better. Where is it? There, you can see it's a bit different there. So that means we've had an overall back reaction here occur. So we have the back reaction, which means we've had a decrease in the blue. This is caused by an increase in the hydronium. So because we've had this back reaction occur, it means we've had to have an increase in this hydronium. Where did the increase for this hydronium come from? This equilibrium reaction here. So that means that we had a forward reaction in this equilibrium, and that means because it was in cold water, Lachat says if it's, you put it in cold water, if you decrease the temperature solution, the exothermic way is favoured because it wants to re-establish that equilibrium. And therefore, that means the forward reaction here must be our exothermic reaction. So therefore, we've now found out that this here, this, um, what's it called? Equilibrium, this dissociation, must be an exothermic dissociation because we've observed the colour change and we've used Le Chatelier's principle to um, determine what has happened in terms of equilibriums. So that hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, that's all for this um, podcast, or this vodcast really, it's a video. So um, if you are interested in this, if you're doing BC chemistry, please um, feel free to listen to the podcast, which is available there. And also with that, there's podcast notes available from um, the Edmodo website, which you can find the details at this website as well. So until then, enjoy your chemistry and keep studying hard.